Welcome to AI TV, everybody. Uh, we're broadcasting live from AI Expo Africa Online 2020. So we are basically online, virtual. Our media center, we've taken it online this year. So AI TV is going around the world right now, talking to people in various different countries. I've just been uh, in Israel, uh, and now I'm in Durban uh, with Darren from Synthesis Software, so East Coast South Africa. Welcome to AI TV, Darren. Thank you, Nick. Um, yes, uh, taking the work from anywhere approach. Uh, uh, Synthesis is based in, uh, has offices in both um, Johannesburg and Cape Town and has a presence uh, in Mauritius too. Uh, but obviously taking the opportunity at the moment where you can work from anywhere to, to spend some time at the coast with the family. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just to introduce myself. Yeah, uh, please Darren do. Back, uh, I head up the Intelligent Data Division at Synthesis, a, a relatively newly formed division um, where we have capabilities in data engineering in the cloud, so building data lakes and uh, ETL processes, mainly focused in AWS. Uh, the second is a, a streaming capability, um, you know, Kafka specialists and, and uh, really getting your, your data to stream in, in real time. Uh, and, and then finally, and, and most importantly in this aspect, is the AI ML capabilities um, where, where we like to innovate with, with, with business leaders to you know, make meaningful change in their, in their world. Well, Darren, just, just before we started this... this, this, this about... Oops, sorry, yeah, no, sorry, go ahead. A little, little bit of a delay there. <laughs> I mean, Darren, just before we started, I mean, obviously, Synthesis um, you know, is one of the largest AWS partners in the region. But we, we are actually talking yes. about... The, I mean, yeah, look, AI conference, you think everybody's talking about tech, technology and algorithms and that kind of thing. But actually, when we start talking about business change uh, and, and business users using these technologies, we're actually talking about a, a change program. And we were talking about that before we started the recording here. And I think Definitely. this is one of the overlooked areas when people are having conversations about the brave new world of 4IR and artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly we've gone beyond the hype cycle now, these technologies are um, being deployed in anger. I think it, the Amazon stack has, I think, 12 core um, services right now, and, and they're adding more all the time. Um, but, but it's the more that the people, the processes, the strategy, the vision, the culture, the organizational components, um, which are equally as important to, to, mm. to making that technology work for the business. I mean, where have you, what's your philosophy on the approach to a business now who's saying, right, we've got to get into the AI track as soon as possible. What, yeah. what would you say to that um, CXO that's been mandated to kind of bring that into their business? Where would you start that conversation with them? Focus on your people. You know, when, when it comes to big digital transformations of any sort, you know, it isn't the technology that, that proves to be the biggest problem. It's the people and processes that need to change and adapt. And the companies that focus first on their people and whether that's on a change management aspect, you know, holding their hands through the change, you know, like we're humans aren't a light switch, you know, you can't just flip the switch and it changes, you know, it takes time and, and effort and, and you know, a, a deliberate amount of focus on the communication and alignment and all of those things. The second aspect and, and the fundamental is around skills and, and all of that. Um, if you want to have successful projects, you need to have successful engineers who can deliver on that value and on that requirement that, that CXO is trying to pull through their vision or whatever. And, and th those two aspects, you know, that having, having the focus on the people and through the change management and the, and the skills, you know, is, is key to, to successful projects. And, and, Traditionally, on, 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 you know, and, and Synthesis is, is well known in the industry for being uh, the first advanced partner, uh, AWS advanced partner in Africa and the Middle East. And, and we've, we've done a tremendous amount of transformational cloud, transformational cloud adoption uh, programs across financial services industry. And what we found is uh, because we get the best and brightest engineers that, you know, like we're going streets ahead on the technology side. But, but the client and some of our own internal staff are not ready for how to operate this, this element. Mm. And, and it is not too dissimilar to, to the ML space where, you know, it's, 
it's so easy to create a, a POC uh, doing some modeling on your laptop, on a notebook. Um, and you can show some statistical significant results on you know, either customer segmentation or personalization or computer vision. You know, it's then saying, okay, well, this it seems to be promise here. Yeah? How do we put that into production? And how do we get that application team to actually operate that ML pipeline in the future? And that little bit is, is the, the thing that's often overlooked in ML. We go, well, you know, com computer vision is, is awesome and exciting and it can make cars drive autonomously. But we haven't necessarily thought about, okay, cool, this is now in production. Who's the person who's gonna be monitoring that ML pipeline? And who's gonna be making sure that that model doesn't have biases in it or, or is, is, is appropriate you know, on, on a daily basis? And if you don't have the right skilled people and if you don't have that change, change kind of mentality and culture, you know, it's going to fall flat. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of always liken it to, you, you kind of, you're used to driving a car, but then you take, de, you know, you take delivery of a Ferrari and, and driving a Ferrari is not, you, you can't just jump into it and turn the key and uh, do what normal people would do in a Ferrari. You, you kind of need to take a systematic approach to driving it correctly and understanding its limitations. Yeah. And, that, and if you press that button too quickly, you're gonna wrap it around a tree. And I think that's exactly the same. Exactly. I mean, when I look at the complexity of, let's say, the Amazon ML, AWS ML stack, and, and, and how that's evolved over, even over the last 12 to 18 months and the new services they put in there, mm -hmm. you, know, you think, well, hang on a minute, you know, if, if we're buying into that as, a, as an enterprise, yeah, who, who is gonna manage it? How, how do we, you know, every model that we build, you know, do we know the accuracy, precision, and bias? How do we fine tune that model? Um, how do we make sure that, that, you know, does that have legal and ethical implications for, our end user customers who are being maybe recommended a product or told to buy this or asked to do that by a bot. Um, you know, these are very interesting times we're living in because actually the interaction with the customer is not going to be by a person and it's not going to be by paper. It's going to be a bot of maybe some description or some response, which is sent by a bot. Maybe it's an, an email or, or whatever it is. So, you know, that, that, that interesting thing you mentioned there about, you know, being able to tune the model after it's in production, you know, how do you, can you go back in and, and, and put in new information that makes it more accurate? Is there an interface even for, yep. for doing that? You know, who's going to build and own yeah. that? that that's, these are all good questions. Exactly. And, and it's around auditability of, um, of, your, of your pipeline. You know, there's not, not only auditors in general, but you, you have to have visibility into a pipeline. And some of some of the managed services that you get are a bit of a back, black box. You know, you, you put in some stuff and it spits it out for you. Um, so, so like there, there's some key considerations to think of like, what does machine learning look like in production? You know, for us coming from a, 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 a data engineering background, a cloud uh, engineering background, you know, we're used to um, making sure that, you know, data quality is up to scratch, that the, your data maturity in your team is pretty high, that you've built the platform and the fundamentals right so that you can enable ML. If you don't have good data, if you don't have consistent and accurate data, you know, your model is always going to be wrong, no matter how good it is. And if you don't have the right operations and if you don't have a very clear vision of what you're trying to solve, you know, the project will always fail. It's, um, machine learning doesn't solve the problem for you. It's, it's like the, the whole technology solution in, in itself, which solves the problem. And a lot of people think that you can just throw an a, a algorithm together and it solves your business problems, but you also have to fundamentally shift how you do business in order to harness the true potential of machine learning. Indeed. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I think another, we, we did a buyer survey earlier in the year. I think we had about 70 people respond to it. And it was very interesting to, to we asked a question around ethics. Um, from a business perspective, do you see ethics as in, an important part of the solution that you're building? Mo most respondents said yes. And then the second question mm. was, how are you developing your ethics framework, your, your frameworks for using these solutions? Now, it was split 50-50. Um, half were saying that they were going to do it themselves, they put their own policy together. And then the other half was sort of saying that they were going to get a third party to help them with that. Are, are you guys at Simplicity, mm -hmm. are you being asked around 
um, the ethical implications of these technologies and are you asked to help input into that kind of thing? I mean, where, where do you see that I at think, the moment? I think, yeah, so I think at the moment, I think we, we, we're not being asked specifically about that, but it is an internal push of ours. You know, like we do believe in responsible AI. I think from a first point of view, the, the ethical considerations start with us selling machine learning to our clients and letting them know what some of the, you know, obviously everyone understands the benefits now, but I don't think people fully understand the, the shortcomings. You know, like a machine learning uh, algorithm or the whole process of AR is not 100% accurate, which is a fundamental shift in, in engineering to begin with. You know, engineering yeah. is a is a black or a white thing. It yeah, it's works, normally it binary. <laughs> it doesn't go like, well, it works 99% of the time and they're thinking, well, no, it should work 100% of the time. And ML is not that. So the question around, you know, can it actually solve your business problem completely? You know, the answer is often not 100% no. You know, like there will be the edge case where it doesn't work. And that's something that we have to ethically remind our clients about. You know, it's so easy to be attracted to the shiny light um, and go for it and, and the new shiny object, but it's, it's, it's often not the right approach. Um, but but from, from an ethical perspective, you know, that the biases that come into it, it's a very difficult thing to solve because humans come with their own natural biases already. So that's right. <laughs> if you're a developer doing something, you in itself could create bias in the system by, by you yourself doing stuff. Um, the challenge we face is that, um, you know, I, I, whereas the technology is going at breakneck speed, I think these areas of concern around ethics in AR have not necessarily caught up with them. And so like when, when trying to follow frameworks in this, in this respect, you know, they, they often found a bit wanting. And so you're, you're left kind of to your own devices and, and, and for that own, for your organization to make sure that, that you create your own AR manif manifest or, 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 or yeah. some guarding framework so that your team knows what to do and what not to do and, and, and you know, like are governed by some form of, of standards. Yeah, I mean, we, we were very lucky to have Kay Firth Butterfield uh, do the keynote today. Uh, well, she's the head of AI at the World Economic Forum. And she's very big on standards and, and, and ethical frameworks for, for uh, AI machine learning. And I was actually talking to, to Fred Werner from the ITU yesterday, who was also giving a track keynote. And I asked him about standards for um, you know, industrial deployment of um, machine learning based technologies. And, and he confirmed, you know, we're, we're very much at the beginning and the early stages mm -hmm. pre pre standardization. Actually, we're pre, we're in the phase before standards are set. And he had an interesting uh, comment to make in the sense that you don't want to bring in standards too soon because you prevent innovation. But at some point, and particularly I think when we're looking at things like social surveillance, um, um, feature recognition, facial recognition, um, things that have a societal impact, I think that's probably where we might start to see um, standards emerging mm -hmm. more rapidly, which also then touch on to things like privacy and GDPR and Poppy and um, you know, people's rights of freedom and those kinds of things. So, yeah, I, uh, we, we, are, we are in this sort of Wild West um, sort of territory at the moment. Um, but but I, we definitely, I mean, when we started the Expo uh, concept uh, in 2017, I mean, people were still commenting on the third AI winter, the false dawn. Um, but actually, what I'm seeing is products emerging all the time that, that are robust and, um, and deployable. Even our synthetic host, Vicky, um, you know, enterprise based synthetic host that you just type in some text and you generate a person and an actor and a screen and everything else. It's, you know, NLP yeah. text recognition that, that that's kind of done now. Um, and it's accessible for, you know, dollars, dollars or cents on, on, on the month, uh, on the day. Yeah. Um, exactly. I think cloud cloud has definitely precipitated, you know, um, like ML in production and made that much, much easier, which means that, um, you, you're able to build an application ecosystem around your ML pipeline, which traditionally was, was, was a quite a big challenge. And so w once you go into that, that ecosystem and you're able to use a, a mixture of, of, of the cloud's managed services, plus a whole bunch of other tool sets together, you start getting a working application that, that, that fulfills that, whatever that AI, um, 
value is. Um, that then doesn't actually <laughs> treat the, the like, are we, are we doing what's right for the customer? Remember, it's their data. And are we doing what's right for, for the client? Um, yeah. And so those are the questions we as a, as a developer of AI and a developer of cloud solutions for clients, we have to ask that question of ourselves first to make sure that we, we're going down the right, um, the right path. Well, just to, just to wrap up, Dan, I mean, I could have this conversation with you over a, a beer or a coffee or a glass of wine or even something Definitely. stronger for another day. But uh, if, if I was to just wrap up here and, and ask the final question, I mean, how would you, if, if, if a CIO said to you, um, tell me how long it's going to take me to deploy machine learning in my business, what, what would be your answer to, to that question? I would say, I don't know. Let's just start. You know, like it, it, it's impossible to tell you how long anything will take without actually getting into the detail. Uh, a lot of people go through this whole analysis paralysis process of making sure they're doing it for the right reasons and going through that. You know, the only way you're ever going to know whether what you're doing is right or how long it's going to take is just starting. Yeah. You know, we recommend creating a proof of concept, getting your hands dirty, understanding what the technology brings and its shortcomings. And once you've proven the value in a, in a, in a, a lightweight, high-impact, two-week or one-month uh, pre-POC, you then know in ballpark how long it's going to take. You know, a, a lot of these concepts are often um, quite esoteric for a CXO person to, to understand in, in, in practicality. But once you actually demo something in a two-week period and they can see the art of the possible, I think they start answering those questions for themselves. Well, Darren, that's a great point to end on. And, uh, you know, thanks very much for, for your contribution, not only on this interview today on AI TV, but also Synthesis were a sponsor of the show. And I think you guys also uh, gave a great talk, which was well received. So again, thank, thanks to you and your colleagues for joining us and taking this leap of faith into the, the virtual world of AI conferences. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hopefully seeing you again next year and uh, best, best of luck with uh, Synthesis and your ongoing work with your clients. Thanks for joining us yeah, today. It's, a, it's an absolute pleasure, Nick, and uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.